does not make sense for a second. If God says we are more than conquerors in Christ, what do you think Satan, do you think Satan's talking about that? If in the Bible it tells us that we can conquer Satan, you think he's talking about that? No, because I'm sure he knows what it says in the Bible. I promise you that he is not happy about that, okay? This is all going to come together, so you have to bear with me, okay? So if we have the power given to us from Christ to overcome, to defeat, to conquer Satan, obviously he's not happy about that. I just said that. But, um, now here's the tricky part. We are able to defeat the devil, but like Matthew 26, 41 tells us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see how that makes sense? Because, hold on, let me, it'll, it'll make sense. Okay, so when Satan knows his fate, he knows that he's going to end up in hell. He knows that. Yeah, I promise you guys, he doesn't think that he's going to win. He knows that he's going to lose. And his, in my mind, I see it as he's trying to bring as many people down as with, like, with him. Because that's just, he's the devil. Like, that's, that's how it works. Okay. So, this is, um, I don't know. I, I know that some of you in the room need this, but I don't know if all of you need it, but, um, so the way that Satan gets to us, the way that he tries to deceive us is with lies, right? He lies to us. He gets into our head. He tells us that you are not good enough. He tells us you won't make it. He says you've made too many mistakes, but God says no. Hebrews 10, 17 says our sins have been forgiven and forgotten. Philippians 4, 13 says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Psalm 139, 14 says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Jeremiah 31, 3 says that he has loved us with an everlasting love. Romans 8, 38 through 39 tells us absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God. Isaiah 43, 4 says you are precious in his sight. Psalm 30, verse 2 says when you cry out to him, he hears you. Not only does he hear you, but he heals you. Who in here believes that every single word in the Bible is God's truth, nothing more, less than less? Seriously, don't put your hand up if you don't believe it. I'm not going to judge you. Like, There's been things in there that I'm like, wow. Like, I just, It's hard to believe, but every single word in there is truth. Okay, the second question, who in here has believed the lies that Satan's told you? I definitely have. Um, one last question, who truly, truly, truly believes that they are conquerors in Christ Jesus? All the time, 24 7. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I make mistakes, and sometimes I'm like, that's too big of a mistake. Like, that's, I'm not, I can't be a conqueror. I just did that, you know? But I talked about our sins have been forgiven and forgotten. One of the ten things that Christ can't do. There's some, something in here that says ten things that Christ can't do, and one of them is forgive. I mean, remember the sins that he's forgiven and forgotten. You cannot remember the sins that he's already forgotten. The problem is just we can't forgive ourselves for the sins that we've done. Okay. Psalm 23, we all know it, right? Oh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. That's verse 4, okay? Psalm 23 doesn't say that I sit in the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't say I go and wait in the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Ephesians 6, 13 says, Therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand and having done all that you can to stand. Let me repeat that last part. After having done all, all that you can in your power to stand. Because God says, I'm going to do what you can but you need to do what you can. Okay. That verse saying, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, if you're in a storm, you can't just sit there and be like, okay, God, take me out of the storm. I'm ready. I, I, I've been through it. I'm ready. Come on now. I'm still here. God, what's going on? You can't just wait. You have to do your best. Okay. But listen to me. Doing your best doesn't mean fighting a fight that is not yours. Let me explain that. So when we're in this battle against the devil, whether it be dealing with addiction or whether it's just dealing with anger and emotion that you don't know how to deal with, no matter what it is, doing what you can, maybe that's only crying out to God. Like I said earlier, Psalms 30 verse 2 says, Oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. He doesn't just acknowledge our cry. He doesn't, he heals it. He doesn't just say, Oh, good job, Aaron, you're doing your best. No, he heals. It's not just acknowledgement. He heals you because he loves you. Maybe it's just taken into his word. We talked about this earlier. Every single word in the Bible is truth. 
So put yourself around his truth, because when you put yourself around truth, when you fill yourself with so much of God's truth, then there's no room for any lies from the world, from Satan. <laughs> when your heart and your soul is so filled with the truth of God, then there's absolutely no other room for anything else. So build your life on truth, on God's truth. Okay, then God will take over. Has anyone ever heard of let go and let God? Yes. Like my favorite thing in the world, okay? You won't know that, but it is. Okay, those five words don't seem like much, but they are so, so true. Let go and let God. Proverbs 69 says, in our hearts, we plan our steps, but the Lord establishes our steps. Let go and let God guide you. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. They trust God. Let go and trust God. Psalm 46, 10 says, God says, be still and know that I am God. Let go and let God be God. Okay, God doesn't, I'm sure you've all heard this, God finds you where you are, but he does not leave you there. When he sees you down there, as when you hit rock bottom and there's nowhere to go but up and you can't seem to get up, God finds you and he does not leave you there. Yeah. Has anybody heard when you get sick it's going to get worse before it gets better? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the case when it gets worse before it gets better in your relationship and your walk with God. And sometimes you don't understand, sometimes I don't understand, sometimes we don't understand when like, God, I thought you had me. And, you said and, when we're sick, what? Huh? You said when we're sick, what? What? You said when, when we're, we're sick, what? It only yeah, gets when worse we're sick, before it gets worse before it gets better, right? Oh, yeah, like, okay. When you have the flu or whatever, you're going to get sicker before you get better, okay? Same goes with our, with our walk with God. When we're, when we're down at the bottom and God finds us and we know that, and then it gets worse, we're like, what happens? Like, I trusted you. I thought you had me. But you have to keep that trust because with that trust, God's going to do what we cannot. Yeah. And take deep breath. Yeah. All these stories in the Bible of God doing miracles um, for people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked with God in the fire and Abraham's wife. 